Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. The risk of bleeding during surgery is clearly increased in patients with thrombocytopenia due to ITP. And there's not a lot of quality data to tell you exactly what the platelet count should be for surgery. This depends on the type of surgery that you're doing. I think it depends to some extent on your surgeon also. Uh, you know, some surgeons have more experience, high volume surgeons with, uh, who, who do certain types of surgery have more experience treating or doing surgery on patients with thrombocytopenia. So clearly, meticulous surgical technique is very, very important. In preparation for surgery, um, a patient with immune thrombocytopenia, there are now at least um, uh, three strategies. The first strategy historically has been to give platelets interoperatively during surgery. And even though you don't raise the platelet count, you get hemostasis. Um, with the advent and the knowledge that intravenous immunoglobulin can be effective, the use of IVIG preceding a surgical intervention and giving several doses a day or so beforehand can raise the platelet counts and even sometimes giving IVIG um, immediately before you give platelet transfusions can in fact reduce bleeding risk with surgery. Since the advent of the FDA approval of thrombopotent receptor agonists, a preferable option is, particularly with elective surgery, is to begin a patient on treatment with one of these agents such as uh, romipicin, which um, can be given as a single injection, usually starting at about three micrograms per kilogram. And you can usually expect within two weeks prior to surgery, two injections, to be able to obtain a platelet count that is in the safe range for surgery, well above 50,000, and depending on the type of surgery, a higher level. We can usually get the platelet count up to where it needs to be uh, for a patient to have surgery. Um, generally, surgeons, anesthesiologists, like to have the platelet count up around 100,000. 100,000 will, will usually be okay to send patients for, for almost any kind of surgery. Um, so if it's an ITP patient, we may give an additional dose of IVIG before therapy. We may increase the prednisone dose. We may add a thrombohedin receptor agonist for a little while on somebody who previously wasn't on one and will continue that until the uh, perioperative period and until they're stable. Um, pregnancy, uh, delivery, C-section uh, can be an issue that comes up sometimes. Epidural anesthesia certainly has to be considered uh, in a pregnant patient who, who, who may need to have a C-section or even not a C-section. But um, in general, we try to get the platelet count to about 80,000 or so. Uh, so later in the pregnancy, we will uh, be more aggressive with the treatment of ITP to try to get the platelet count up into that range where before that, their, their platelet count, really there's no, it's okay to just have it the same as a non-pregnant patient as long as they're, they're not bleeding. But we may be more aggressive right toward the end of pregnancy to prepare them for delivery. For emergency surgeries, the, the treatment of choice is going to have to remain intravenous immunoglobin with platelets and possibly even uh, some corticosteroids, knowing that it might in fact um, uh, reduce healing and could be contraindicated if, you're, if the surgery is based upon, for example, an intradomal infection or some infectious process. So IVIG platelets for the acute circumstance, for elective surgery using the thrombopotent receptor agonists very effective, very safe, and um, probably preferable.